Recording in progress. Hello, class. Um, welcome to lecture. Hope you're all having a great day today. Um, let's dive into lecture. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the Battle of Bunker Hill and its significance. And while that, yes, the Battle of Lexington and Concord did signify the first American victory in the Revolutionary War, the Battle of Bunker Hill is what really gives the American colonists a true sense that they have a shot to actually win the Revolutionary War. Um, just a quick review from yesterday. Um, make sure you watch that lecture if you haven't already. It, you need to watch that before you watch this one. Um, but just to go over some things, um, Paul Revere and his midnight ride and how he, where we get the famous line, the British are coming, um, the start of the revolution and how the British troops marched to Concord. And then the battles of Lexington and Concord where the Americans are losing at Lexington, they were able to push back British troops at Concord and force them back to Boston. Um, talking about the Battle of Bunker Hill now, um, why were the why was Bunker and Breeze Hill so important? Um, well, after the Battle of Concord, the Continental Army wanted Boston. Um, they had surrounded Boston after pushing British troops back into the city. And Bunker and Breeze Hill overlooked Boston. It gave them a good strategic position. And artillery could then be set up which could shell British troops in Boston and just completely put the British into a submission and give hopefully the Continental Army control over Boston. Um, just a prelude to the British attack, um, the Continental officers led by Colonel William Prescott decided that main fortification would be set up upon Breed's Hill, not Bunker's Hill on the night of June 16th, 70, 1775. Um, while American troops were setting up fortifications throughout the night and into the morning, a British ship known as the HMS Lively that was stationed in the Boston Harbor shelled American troops that were fortifying the hill. It was rather unsuccessful. There was only one known American casualty. Um, the next day, before the attack, British General William Howe was commanded to take 1,500 of his best men across the Boston Channel to the peninsula where the hills were located. Um, just, and just a little fun fact here, Colonel Stark, who was a Continental officer, placed a, placed a stake 100 feet in front of fortifications where he ordered troops not to fire upon British regulars until they passed it. Um, this is where we get the line, do not fire until you see the whites of their, lot, of their eyes. That is a bit of a myth. They don't really know if someone actually said that or who, if it was said, who said it. It was just more of a rallying cry for the Continental soldiers to, to kind of boost their morale. Um, here's a little map that gives a layout of the, the battle. As you can see, there are British ships located throughout the harbor. Um, HMS Lively was stationed outside of Charlestown where it shelled Breed's Hill at, during the night. Um, here we can see where they were fair, British troops were ferried over and then assaulted um, continental fortifications. Um, so the battle itself, you know, what went wrong for the British here? Um, as you can see, there was, they attacked in the middle of summer, June 17th in the afternoon. So it was very hot out. The British wore wool uniforms and it was very demanding on British soldiers. Um, on the hill, there, were, there was unplowed hay bales and waist high grass. And it kind of made it very hard for British troops to move up the hill. Um, there were rail fences throughout the hill where, with the hay bales and it interrupted British marching formations which made it even more difficult to get up top of the hill while they're taking heavy fire from British or from Continental soldiers. These British soldiers had heavy equipment loads, very unnecessary. Um, if you're marching up a hill, you wanna be as light as possible. You don't wanna have a heavy equipment load. And these British soldiers were supposed to be covered by artillery, 
but they supplied their own artillery with the wrong caliber ammo. So these British soldiers are moving up the hill with no cover fire. And most importantly, there was no cover for the British as they were moving up these hills. They're just walking straight into Continental, the Continental Army's gunfire. There's no cover. They're just walk, marching up the hill straight into battle, just as most battles were these days or in those times. And among British officers, there was a lot of confusion. They kind of followed their own orders. They didn't follow the orders from their higher commands. And this has also contributed to the heavy casualties for the British. Um, and then moving on, you know, what went right for the colonists? As I mentioned, those rail fences, you know, these colonists weren't trained soldiers at the time. They hadn't become allied with the British or the French yet. That happens a couple years later. So these fences, they could place their muskets on them instead of having to free, free aim and use the fences to aim at the British for them. Um, the Continental Army had a short, had an ammo shortage. So they were waited until British troops were 50 paces from fortifications to conserve their ammo, which means they're very, these British troops were very close and they had no cover. That made it very easy for colonists to hit their targets. Most importantly, the colonists did have cover. They built those fortifications throughout the night. And when the British would fire upon them, they just had to take cover and they would suffer very minimal casualties. So the aftermath, um, talking about this point first, British forces after three costly assaults forced the American colonists to retreat but they only retreated because they had run out of ammunition. This then gave the British full control of the peninsula and forced American troops out. Um, the colonists suffered 450 casualties in total. 115 of these casualties were deaths, while the British suffered 1,054 casualties with 226 deaths, including 19 high-ranking officers. Um, the colonists left behind artillery and trenching tools after being forced to retreat. And at this time, these things were very valuable to the colonists. They didn't have very many artillery or very much artillery and entrenching tools. They weren't well supplied. So leaving these behind was costly for them. And then report of this battle throughout the colonies and created friction among the British government. And it gave hope to, to George Washington that his troops could actually prevail in this conflict in the Revolutionary War, which is why the Battle of Bunker Hill was so significant because it was really a morale booster. While yes, the colonists were pushed out, they had hope that they could combat the British troops despite being outgunned and outmanned. Um, just some quick reminders. Complete the lecture quiz. It's about everything I just talked about for you during the lecture. Um, submit presentation topics by Friday. And make sure you watch next lecture before class on Wednesday. Okay, that covers everything for this lecture. Um, I will see you all in class tomorrow. Thank you and have a good day.